I recently did a video on the MSR1 MM Wave sensor from Apollo Automation. Shortly after releasing that video, Apollo Automation sent me a whole bunch of other things, including the MSR2 uh, MM Wave sensor, which I'll talk about today. They also sent me some optional items, including the CO2 sensor, the little uh, USB power adapter that goes into a little USB wall plug, uh, as well as a little mounting bracket. So we'll talk about all that here in just a minute. So let's get started. All right, so let's take a look at the MSR2. This is it right here. It's very tiny. It's actually tinier. Uh, it's a, a smaller form factor, uh, making it easier to integrate into your projects uh, without compromising functionality. That's the boilerplate on their website. You can compare this to the MSR1. So here's the MSR1, and then here's the MSR2, and you can see that it is a little bit smaller. And then from a size or sideways perspective, there's that. Still has the USB-C on the, on the side, so you, you have the original little uh, USB-C power plug, you can still use that. So there it is on the side there. Now on the MSR1, the case slid out like that. On the MSR2, you just pop the case off the back just like that. And then the device will come out of the case if you wanna to choose to add anything extra to it. I don't recommend sticking a knife in here, but I'm just gonna pop that out. We can look at the board. So this is the, the little board. It is an ESP32, uh, whoops. It is an ESP32 based board. A C3 mini is the, the basis of this board. And then there is a connector on the front or back, whichever way you wanna call this, where you can put your CO2 sensor. And there's an, an additional one back here. Now, if you put something back here, it may not fit back in the case. So here's connector number one and the connector number two. So for that, you can take this little CO2 sensor, which is an optional thing. It doesn't come with a CO2 sensor and you can go ahead and put that on the board. And just snap it on like that. And now you have a CO2 sensor on this board and then you can just put it back in the case and it fits nicely back in that case. Now, before I put that back on, I do wanna show you that if you do have, or if you do buy the optional uh, mount, this is a little mount that come you can buy with it. You can articulate it different directions if you want to mount it on something. Uh, in order to put the mount on, you just take the, the, the back cover off and you snap this one in its place, like so. And then you can just mount this basically wherever you want to put it. It just kind of mounts... Uh, either on the wall like this, pointed down, or however you want to do it. You still have to power it, but you can mount it however, however you want to with this mount. So take that back off, and we'll snap this one back on. And so that's how you get it like that. Now I do have the CO2 sensor on it as well. Now there are options for powering this uh, device. You can power it directly from a USB-C cable, which I have here, you just stick it in the side, of course, like any other USB cable. Uh, you can also use something like this, which you can purchase from Apollo as well. It's a little USB-C uh, connector, or I don't know, adapter, I guess it would be. And then it makes a little L shape like that, and you can just stick this on the side. And then you just, for US customers, you use that kind of plug. And then you plug it into your wall and it just basically sits on the wall and powers itself from that little plug on the wall, little wall wart. So that's an option as well. So you do have different ways to power this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. This, this is an ESP device. So it, it uh, connects to Home Assistant just like any of the other ones. And I, I showed this more in depth whenever I was uh, doing the MSR1. So make sure you watch the MSR1 video. But essentially what you'll do is you'll connect it to Wi-Fi uh, or connect to it, plug it in, connect to it. It has its own built-in hotspot and it will allow you to connect to uh, it. And then you put in an IP address or you automatically refresh your browser and there it goes. 
And then once you do that, uh, you'll be able to choose the Wi-Fi network. It's simple. Put the password in for your Wi-Fi network and then you're done. And then once you have the Wi-Fi network configured, you just go over to Home Assistant. It'll show over here as a Discover device under Notifications. Just click on Check It Out and then click on Configure and it asks if you want to add that device. Click on it very quickly, adds it to it. And then under your ESP Home, well, you can give it an area first. Uh, I don't know. And then finish it. And then when you come over to ESP Home on your integrations, you will see that you have that device listed. So here's the multi-sensor two. Click on it. And then all of the all of the entities and whatnot that are available to it are here in this um, in this home assistant panel. Uh, there's our CO2 reading. Um, and then our pressure sensors, light sensors. So UV index and light, so lux and UVI. Radar detection distance is just sitting on the desk here, so it's not really measuring anything appropriate yet. I go into setting up, or I talk about how this works in the MSR1. There's really no difference between the MSR1 and the MSR2, except for a couple of the sensors and the, the size of the unit itself. So I won't go into a lot of detail on this one, Watch the MSR1 video, uh, and then also I have a blog post on that as well, linked from the, the video for MSR1. This also, I uh, will uh, note that it does have the engineering mode, so you can work on this to set things up exactly the way you want to. So let's talk about some specifics of the MSR2. It's an updated version of the MSR1 uh, developed with the feedback from the community. Now, I will say that the... Uh, since releasing the video and dealing with uh, Apollo Automation, uh, they've been very active in the Discord. They do a good job of answering feedback and questions. I've been very pleased with uh, the company so far. So when they say based on your feedback, I would guess that it probably is that. Is that. It's based on feedback that they've gotten from people who have bought these other sensors before. Uh, it does build on the foundation of the MSR1 there are several incremental upgrades to enhance the performance and usability. So what is a new in it? It's got a compact design, so it's smaller. I showed you that a minute ago. It does have the additional expansion slot. There's one on the front and on the back. It's kind of what I showed before. The CO2 sensor is in the front expansion slot. And then on the back, they have another CN2 expansion slot. Again, I don't know if uh, putting something on there is going to prevent it from going into the case. The pressure sensor has been changed to the DSP310 for improved accuracy. Uh, they want you to note that the base MSR2 only includes pressure and temperature. Humidity readings from the sensor uh, that they use in the MSR1 is too difficult to configure for such a small board that is now being used by the MSR2. You can get humidity sensing through the optional CO2 sensor module. I'm not sure how that works exactly. I haven't played around with that yet, but I don't see anything here. I've got the CO2 sensor in here, but I don't really see anything related to uh, humidity from that. So I'm not sure how we're getting humidity out of that. Uh, what else? The um, This is a big important note. The MSR2 is an incremental update. It's not a major upgrade from the MSR1. Um, they're gonna continue to support both the MSR1 and the MSR2. And finally, let's talk about some details. It is an MM Wave radar sensor with an LD2410B sensor. That's the same sensor that's in the MSR1. It is good for one target only. I do actually have an MTR1 here in a bag still. This one is a multi-target tracking sensor, and I will be talking about that at some point in the future. Uh, the Lux and UV sensor are both the LTR390 UV. It does have the DPS 310. I think I, I said DSP in the other one. It's a DPS 310 sensor. This is temperature and pressure only, and there's no humidity in this one. That's the difference between MSR1 and MSR2. One thing to note too about the temperature sensors is that the ESP32 is a con in a constant Wi-Fi connection, generates significant heat. With that being said, you probably will need to adjust your uh, your thresholds or your offset for your temperature based on some uh, some sort of uh, reference 
thermometer in your location. And you can see that here. The temperature right now is 98.8 degrees. Uh, that's not the temperature in the room I'm in. My, the room I'm in is at, um, it's at 77 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is at 98.8 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the actual temperature on the board itself. So you'll want to calibrate that for sure. Uh, there's an optional CO2 CO2 sensor, and I've got that plugged in now, the SCD40, and you can see that measuring CO2 levels here. I'm going to be curious to see how, how bad my CO2 level is. A lot of people I've been reading on the forums have posted comments about how they didn't realize how high their CO2 levels were and that they needed more fresh air in the rooms they were in. I'm in a pretty enclosed space here with this room. There are no windows or anything in this room. So I'm going to be curious about how the CO2 levels um, stack up in here and what the, the values should actually be for safety. All right, so there's Bluetooth tracking on, because this is an ESP32 C3 Mini. It has Bluetooth in it. You do have to do some uh, YAML configuration if you want to use that. There's an RGB pixel, so the light actually will come on if I... I click the button here, RGB light will actually turn on. You can see it go on and off there. So a little RGB light to play around with. I think you can change the color with that. It does have a piezo buzzer. And then when you buy it, you get the MSR2 uh, board and case. You get the documentation, open source code and CAD models. If you want to print any of the the mounting brackets or your own mounting brackets, then you can do that because you get the CAD models for that. Lots of documentation for this. Uh, if you want to come into this page and look at the MSR2, you've got setup, calibrating and updating. You've got some examples, troubleshooting and some MSR2 reviews. Um, so under getting started, it basically tells you how to do the, the full setup for Home Assistant calibrating and updating, updating the firmware, tuning it with Home Assistant. With the engineering mode on these, you can actually set the engineering mode to on, and then you can adjust all of your thresholds for different areas. Even though it tracks one person, it still does track multiple areas. So you can set up um, four or five zones, I think it is, and you can actually alert based on something entering or leaving a specific zone. So that allows you to be very granular in how you set things up. All right, those are all of the details for this particular device, and that's gonna conclude the video on the device. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below on Discord. If you're a subscriber, thank you so much for that. If you're not a subscriber, do the thing down there. For those supporting me as channel members, thank you very much. It does go a long way to help me do this. And then those of you supporting me on Patreon and Ko-fi and other places, thank you as well. And with that, we will see you on the next one.